My administration is now committed to diplomacy that addresses the full range of issues before us and to pursuing constructive ties among the United States, Iran, and the international community. This process will not be advanced by threats. We seek instead engagement that is honest and grounded in mutual respect. Thank you. And Ed A. Shoma Mubarak. Lovely. And with us now is Bridget Gabriel, the author of the book, They Must Be Stopped, Why We Must Defeat Radical Islam and How We Can Do It. And uh, Bridget, uh, the, President Bush had sent a, a message to the Iranian people uh, at, at about the same uh, time to commemorate the, the same holiday. And it was, it, it kind of fell on deaf ears, I guess, in some circles. But what's wrong with sending a message like this? Uh, this is the wrong message to send because in Islamic thinking and Middle Eastern thinking, you only go to the negotiating table to negotiate the terms of your surrender. So what he is doing basically is signaling to the mullahs that America is surrendering because we cannot fight you. Therefore, we are crawling to ask for uh, your cooperation and working with you because we know we cannot defeat you. It's the wrong message. Instead of empowering the people of Iran who need to rise against the mullah regime and overthrow the Mullah regime. He is basically putting down the people of Iran, giving them the wrong signal, and empowering the Mullah regime by saying, um, you know, go ahead, finish your nuclear bomb, let's just talk, let's see how we can work it out. Well, um, did he mention liberty or freedom? Did he, either of those words, I, I didn't get to watch the entire uh, no, message. Uh, no, no. Uh, because President Bush did talk about uh, right. freedom. And, and his, this is exactly what message. the Iranian people wanted. President Bush was talking to the Iranian people. people not to the Mullahs. Not to That's the Mullahs. That's the key difference here. Okay. Major difference because a lot of the Iranian people who are now young have never experienced life away from the mullahs. They have been oppressed all their lives. They are hungry for Western freedom. They are hungry to be able uh, to have an individual voice, to be able to express themselves. And that is not existent under the mullah regime. And uh, it's very unfortunate. He also kept referring to it as the Islamic Republic of Iran. Did that strike you as odd? I was talking to Bill Kristol uh, earlier and he, in the makeup room, and he said, uh, that that seemed to just strike the wrong note. You don't you don't say the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, which I guess is the. Full that's right. Name. That's right. Why did he do uh, he's that? Trying, that's a bowing. That's tipping his hat to the mullahs. Again, it's bowing his head to the mullahs. He's trying to say, okay, we accept you as an Islamic Republic, uh, without really taking into consideration that hey, this is the same Islamic Revolution that called America the Great Satan. The same mullahs are still in operation. Uh, Ayatollah Khomeini is still the leader. Uh, they look at him as the spiritual leader, and he looks at America as Satan. Itself. Uh, and by, by acknowledging them and giving them respect as an Islamic Republic, again, sending the wrong message. It's of weakness. Let's just make, be weakness. clear. This is a message of weakness. This is a message of surrender. America surrender. issued a videotape to basically surrender to the Iranian regime by basically saying, we cannot fight you, let's work together. Now, this follows on the heels of uh, when Russia, of course, is working with Iran to help Iran develop the machinery and the, and the plants necessary to to fulfill its nuclear ambitions, we tried to get Russia to stop. Obama right. makes this overture about, well, we will consider taking our missile shields out of Eastern Europe. And, and Medvedev basically said, I don't want to talk about this. So he, and this rebuffed him. It was an embarrassment. Exactly. It was an embarrassment. And it goes to show... Selling out our Eastern uh, European allies. That's right. And it goes to show President Obama's naivete when it comes to the Iranian regime. What is driving the mullahs is basically messianic vision of bringing back the Mahdi or the Islamic Messiah. This is what's driving the nuclear program. The Shiite Muslims believe that their Messiah will come only after a world catastrophe is created to usher his return so Islam will reign supreme. Ahmadinejad, in his speeches at the UN in 2005 and 2006, referred to the Mahdi. He believes he is the appointed one to usher in his return. And they believe that by finishing a nuclear bomb and wiping Israel off the map and creating that catastrophe, they can usher that. They don't want to have any respectable relationship with the United States. They have no respect for us. They think we are morally corrupt. We are morally bankrupt. We are Satan. And, mo and they don't respect weakness. They, they don't do not respect weakness. Respect and when I even weakness. The lighting on this message and, and it, it just seemed too soft. It didn't. It didn't seem strong. And I think he he could appear strong if he wanted to. And you know he's a fit guy and he could. You know, he but didn't did, come across as a man. It, Remember the Middle East. Men are strong. Men are authoritative. Men speak passionately with authority. They speak seriously. Uh, he came across as a not a manly man to the Iranians. So he was trying to appeal oh, to them. It's the wrong message. That hits right in the gut. How is this Farsi? What's that? I was as Farsi at the end of the uh, video. Oh, it was fine. It was okay. All right, Miss <laughs> Gabriel, thanks. We appreciate.